So, I will start our class with the discussion on our homework. For number one, although uh, most of you seems don't have any problem with this, uh, I will still uh, discuss it anyway. Yeah. Uh, for number one and number two, uh, the question is, sorry, number one actually. For number one, the question is only about the, uh, how to determine the reaction force at A and B. So basically, for this particular number, uh, the main concern here is how to treat this distributed force. Okay, and uh, how to treat this, this, uh, this distributed force. So basically we have two uh, triangular distributed force. Uh, the first one, wait a minute. Mm. Oh, so, yeah, the first one is this one. And the second one is the, the one on the right, this one. So we have two distributed force there, okay? And both have, have the shape of a triangle, okay? Both have the shape of triangle. So basically, as long as you know how to treat both, then uh, you can uh, replace both with concentrated force and then you can try to find out the reaction force at A and B. So later, okay, I think I will just uh, discuss about this a little bit. So most likely it will be like this. Okay, at A there will be reaction force because it's a pin. There will be AY, AX. Okay, and at B there will be, uh, because it's a roller, there will be PY. Okay, and then uh, here we have 1.5 kN mm, with an angle of uh, 30 degrees. Okay, and then uh, the first triangle. Okay, for the first triangle, uh, we have to know about the uh, resultant which is caused by the first triangle, the, the one on the left. So the maximum is two kilonewton and the length here, right? The length here is 1.8 total, right? 1.2 meters plus 0 0.6 meters. So 1.8 meters in total. So we can find the first resultant R1 is equal to two kilonewton per meter multiplied by 1.8 meters divided by two. So it's around, it's uh, 1.8 kilonewton. Okay, and where are we supposed to place it? We supposed to place it uh, one, third, uh, one third of the length from the right side or two third from the zero location. So if it's from the zero here, uh, two third from zero, because the length, the overall length is 1.8, Two third of from zero is supposed to be one point two meters. So exactly at A. So this one, there will be our R one equal to one point eight kilonewton. Okay. Now we take a look at the R two. So it's about this particular triangle. The length is one point two meters. So this one is two kilonewton as well, two kilonewton per meter multiplied by 1.2 meter divided by two. So it's supposed to be 1.2 kilonewton. Okay. And where we're supposed to place it? Two third from zero here or one third from the maximum. Okay. If it's a one third from the maximum, uh, the maximum is 0 0.6 meter from uh, A. So this one is uh, the location of the maximum. And then uh, we have to add uh, one third from this. One third of uh, 1.2 meters is supposed to be 0 0.4 meter. So roughly here. And the distance here is supposed to be one meter. 0 0.6 meter plus 0 0.4 meters. And this one is our R2 equal to 
1.2 kilometer, like that. Okay, and this is our free body diagram. Using this particular free body diagram, we will be able to solve for AX, AY, and BY using sigma FX, sigma FY, and sigma moment equals zero. Okay, I believe for number one is supposed to be clear enough, right? Okay, any question for number one? Hello, Shan. Shan Virya. Hello, Shan. Shan is not around. How about you, Hugo? Is it understood for number one? Pretty already a bit understood, so. Sorry? Already quite understand it. Okay. Okay, now I will uh, go for number two. Number two is about internal force at one particular point. Okay, if the length is L, okay, and the pin support is here, the one in question is uh, the internal force and moment at L per four. L per four is roughly here, I believe, right? So this one is L per four. How to do that? <coughs> in this case, like it or not, because uh, if we do, if we want to find the uh, internal force and moment at this particular point, okay, we have to do section here, okay, and then we can take a look uh, which uh, uh, which side of the section that we can use. We can use the left side or we can use the right side, okay, for both. Like it or not, we have to still solve for the external forces. So that's the first thing that we're supposed to do. Okay, we have to solve for the external forces first. Okay, in order to do that, as usual, in order to solve for the external forces, we have to uh, simplify the distributive force. Okay, we have to simplify the distributive force into the concentrated force representation of the concentrated force. And it's quite simple. Uh, the maximum distributive force is W, and the length is L. So the resultant R is equal to W multiplied by L. Okay, exactly in the middle. Then we have a pin join on the left, AY, AX, and we have a roller join at the other end. Y. Okay, then we can solve for uh, AX, uh, AY, and BY using sigma FX equal to zero, sigma FY equal to zero, and sigma moment equal to zero. Okay, if you solve using this three equation, okay, we will get that AX is equal to zero. Okay, I, I will not discuss the detail of the calculation. Because you always do it uh, at home. This is just to check whether you do it correctly or not. Okay. Uh, and if you use sigma moment equal to zero at A, you will be able to find out that BY, yeah. Okay. You will be able to find out that BY is equal to. Uh, WL divided by two, and using sigma FY equal to zero, we will find out that AY is WL divided by two. Okay. After we find out uh, the all the reaction forces, then uh, we can try to solve for this particular problem: the internal force and moment at L per four. Okay. <coughs> We can do it either way, the left section, okay, or the right section. So it's up to up to you. Okay. For example, I want to solve it using the left section, this one. So then I will draw the free body diagram of the left section. So this is it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's too much. Wait a minute. <laughs> Okay. 
So this is the left section. Okay. At A there, we have AY and X. AX is zero, so I will not draw it. AY is WL per two, going upwards. WL per two. Okay. And uh, then we also have distributed force. W. Okay. And the length here is L per four. Beside that, we have also uh, the internal force and moment. Don't forget about it. Okay. Uh, just now. Sun, William, are you there already? Uh, yes, sir. Ah, where, where were you just now? Uh, just now, I changed my internet connection, sir. Okay. To mobile data. Okay, Sean. Uh, yes, for the internal force and internal moment in this particular free body diagram, where I supposed to put it, uh, if I want to put it here at this location, okay, for the internal shear force, is it supposed to be going up or going down for the positive direction? I can hear that you are opening mm. your notes. Okay. Like yes, you still a bit confused about it or what? Uh, no, no, I'm checking uh, just to make sure again, sir. I put it uh, to the bottom, just Oh, uh, downwards. Okay. Yeah, downwards. Downward. Positive downwards because it's supposed to be positive clockwise. Okay. Yes. So for V, shear force, internal shear force, we're supposed to put it uh, going downwards like that. And after that, how about the. Uh, do we have a uh, internal normal force or not? Sean, in this case, is there any normal component in this case? It's going to the right, sir, but the it's value is the right, but it doesn't have, but the, in this particular free body dam, there is no uh, uh, internal, uh, there is no, no uh, force going to the uh, horizontal direction, right? Yes, sir. So in that case, uh, it is not compulsory for us to put this, this one. So it's not compulsory for you to put that because they will, uh, anyway, the normal force there will be zero. So we don't have to do this. You don't have to throw this. It's supposed to be okay. You just need to put the internal normal force there if there is a horizontal component in this particular free body diagram. Okay, so normal force is zero. So we just uh, put it away. Uh, what else? How about moment? There's supposed to be moment. Moment is always okay. Moment will be always there. V will be always there. Shear force will be always there. So for moment, the positive direction is supposed to be clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, sorry, sir. Can you hold on a moment, sir? <coughs> Okay, so uh, oh. sorry. Yeah, uh, moment is supposed to be clockwise or counterclockwise. The moment is going to clockwise, sir. Yeah, clockwise. Are you sure? Clockwise is like this. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, counterclockwise positive. Counterclockwise because moment positive is supposed to be making the beam smiling. Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay, so this one is uh, our shear internal shear force and internal moment that we supposed to solve. Okay, now. If we want to solve this, then uh, we can try uh, to simplify this. How to simplify that is by replacing the distributed force because now we already draw the free body diagram and L here, okay, L there, yeah, L there, uh, L for per four there is fixed, right? So we can just try to simplify it uh, for the. Uh, distributed force in order to solve this. So if I we can draw it this way, this one is our resultant of the distributed force exactly in the middle. Okay, R there, uh, the magnitude of R there is supposed to be what, uh, Sean? Uh, uh, we, uh, WL, WL over four. Yeah, WL over four, right. And then, uh, the length there, uh, the, the location there is supposed to be 
L per eight from the left side. Correct, right, son? Uh, yes, sir. So this is our free body diagram that we're supposed to solve. So now we can neglect the W and replace the W with the R like that, WL divided by four. And now we can try to solve for V and M, okay? I want to solve for phi first, so I will use sigma Fy for to see. What we will what we will have there, uh, Chan, for sigma Fy for to see. Uh, half half WL. Okay. Negative so, sir. Negative. So, so okay. So going up is negative. Yes. WL per two. What else? And then, uh, per L, uh sorry, uh, WL over four. Positive WL over four. What else? Plus V equals to zero. Yeah, plus V correct equal to zero. So in this case, we will get the value of V. So V there, I'm sorry, V here is supposed to be capital V because here force is capital V. Okay, V there is supposed to be uh, WL over four, uh, sorry, WL over two minus WL over four. So it's supposed to be positive WL over four, correct, right? Uh, yes. So we get uh, the first question there, WL over 4 for the fee. Now, after solving for the fee, can we solve for a moment? Yes, by taking moment at A. Yeah, by taking at, moment. Uh, sorry, at the W over 2. Yeah, W over 2. Actually, either way is supposed to be okay. You can... Uh, you can take the moment here or you can take the moment here. So both are supposed to be okay. okay for Shan, uh, he, he did it uh, by doing uh, sigma moment at A, at the left edge. So we will try to use that. Sigma moment at A equal to zero. Okay, what we will get there, Shan? Uh, WL over 4. Mm, WL over 4. Times L over 8. Times L, yeah, correct. Times L over 8. Plus WL over 4 times L over 4. WL over 4. That one is for the fee, right? Okay, WL yep. over 4 times L over 4. Okay, and what else? And then uh, minus m equals to zero. Correct. So our m is supposed to be the summation of both. So what we will get there is uh, wl square over 32 plus wl square over 16. OK. So what we have is supposed to be 3 per 32 WL square. This is our moment. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Excuse me, sir. Okay, hmm? sir. I have a question. Yep, yep. Who is this? Uh, can you explain again uh, how Sorry, did you Sorry, who is this? The... I can see your name. Uh, William. William. Okay, William. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, how do you determine the direction of the force? Because... Oh. Uh, if I'm not if, if I'm not mistaken, I uh, read that if the forces x on the uh, on the on the right side of the of the point, it uh, the direction would be uh, to the negative y axis. If mm -hmm. the if the force was in the right uh, in the left side of the point, it would be to the positive y axis. Is it true, or how do you determine it? Thank you. So okay. So basically, uh, the way to memorize it, because it's it's easier for you to memorize it, okay? Just try to memorize it, because this one is uh, about sign convention, okay? For sign convention, uh, uh, you can just memorize it. So basically, sorry, I need to plug in my charger. Wait a minute. Huh. So basically, if we have a beam like this, okay, <coughs> uh, then we do the section like that, okay, and 
uh, when we take a look at the left edge, uh, sorry, at the left section, like this, okay, uh, the internal force and internal moment, uh, the first one that you're supposed to draw is the shear force, internal shear force. Internal shear force is supposed to be always clockwise. Okay, so if we take a look at the left uh, cut, it's supposed to be like this. If we take a look at the right cut, it's supposed to be like this, clockwise. Okay, then the next thing is uh, normal force. Okay, normal force, uh, the assumption is always tension for positive. So for tension, it's supposed to be going to the right. Here, for the left, for the right cut, it's supposed to be going to the left. Okay, now the next one is moment. Okay, for moment, uh, it's supposed to make the beam smiling. So uh, for the left uh, cut, it's supposed to be like this. For the right cut, it's supposed to be like this. Okay, uh, how to memorize it? It's just like, for V, shear force, internal shear force, clockwise. Yeah, clockwise is positive. Then for normal force, okay, tension is positive. Then for moment, bending moment, Okay, for bending moment, smiling is positive. Smiling beam. You get it? Hello, hello? Just now, who asked this now? I forgot. Hello? Yes, we sir. Hmm. Is it answering your question, William? Yes, sir, thank you. Hmm. But maybe you are a bit confused about smiling beam here. So why it's like this? Because if we take a look at a beam, and if we give a moment like this, okay, the deformation which will happen to the beam will be like this. And it is smiling, right? So uh, that's why it's supposed to be clockwise if uh, the cut is on the left edge like this. Okay, and it's supposed to be counterclockwise if the cut is on the right edge like this. Okay, I think it's supposed to be clear enough for the sign convention. Sorry, but what if there is an, an another external force acting on the middle of the beam? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, it's supposed to be same. It's supposed to be the same. So basically. Uh, the internal shear force, internal normal force, and internal bending moment, it depends, the, look, uh, the positive side, uh, the positive direction, it depends only on uh, the section, okay? The section is happening on the right edge or the section is happening on the left edge of the, that particular free body diagram. Because when we draw the free body diagram, we always put the internal force, internal moment, internal normal force at the edge, right, William? Okay, sir. I we, we cannot put it in the middle. Okay, when we cut like that, it's either we take this side of the cut or this side of the cut. So your free body diagram is either like this for the left side of the cut or like this for the right side of the cut. Do you get it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So we only concentrate on this where we do the cut. Okay, and the sign convention is like this. Okay, supposed to be clear enough or not? If it's not, I will explain again because because this one is very important. Kalau binnya itu vertical, momennya bakal gimana? Nah, kalau vertical agak sedikit membingungkan ya, karena kalau vertical itu alignment kita. Nah itu kalau yang vertical alignment kita itu bisa jadi ini kita putar. 
seperti ini jadi vertikal seperti ini atau titik kita putar kebalikan jadi vertikal seperti sana kebayang ya jadi nah ya. sebenarnya tidak ada masalah tidak ada masalah mau diputar kemanapun tidak ada masalah jadi eh, bisa jadi kayak dia diputarnya tadi kan kalau bimnya seperti ini kita anggap eh, positifnya ngikutin yang seperti ini ya atau kebalikannya bimnya seperti ini kita anggap positifnya mengikuti yang seperti ini oke okay? itu sebenarnya nggak ada masalah dua-duanya tidak ada masalah asalkan kalian konsisten Oke, okay, Darin. Yang itu tidak ada masalah, asalkan konsisten. Kalau yang horizontal sudah pasti seperti itu. Oke, okay, Darin. Okay. Ya, itu pertanyaan bagus ya. Uh, so, if the beam is vertical, what we supposed to do? If the beam is vertical, is is it it will be a bit confusing, of course. Okay, because you can rotate it. If the beam is horizontal is like this, you can rotate the sine convention to follow it like this, clockwise, or to follow it like this, counterclockwise. Okay, either way is supposed to be okay, as long as you are consistent. Okay, Sip. okay, kita lanjutkan ya. <coughs> Untuk nomor tiga ini ada pertanyaan tadi yang nomor tiga yang bertanya siapa ya? Who asked for number three just now? I forgot. Um, oh, Rafi, oke. Okay. Rafi, for number three here, uh, which part is which part confusing you? I think it's just the reason because I got absurd numbers, sir. So I'm not really sure about my calculations. You got what? Uh, weird numbers. Ah, not necessarily weird numbers is is wrong. So is 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 uh not necessarily weird numbers supposed to be wrong. Okay. Uh, the one yeah. that you 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 ask is F, right? Uh, and H2, sir. Okay. Yeah, for H, H is actually much simpler to solve. Okay. Why I say that H is much simpler to solve? Because for H, uh, internal force at H, okay, uh, basically we can do the section here, right? Without solving anything, we can directly solve this. Okay, without solving anything, we can directly solve this by solving this particular cut. Okay. So basically, for H, we can just draw the uh, free body diagram into like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, just like this. Okay, for H is you can just draw it like that. Okay, <coughs> and as I went this, but we discussed before, for a vertical beam, uh, it's supposed to be a bit confusing. Okay, uh, in our case here, uh, I will try to use a clockwise rotation. Okay, I will try to use clockwise rotation. So if this one is the positive sign i will use it this way okay so if we assume that it's a horizontal beam this this side is supposed to be going up like that okay and because of that uh, we can draw the uh, the internal force there okay it's supposed to be going clockwise so it's going down yep and then uh we don't know about the normal force, so it's better for us to just draw it tension and moment because going up is uh, on the right side. Smiling is like this. So like this one. <coughs> like that one, but uh, we, uh, we put it as a vertical. Okay, so this one is our V, this one is our N, and this one is our moment. Okay, uh, here, what we know is just one thing. The weight is 800 LB. So here we have 800 LBF. And using that, yeah, uh, just that input, we can try to find out for V, N, and M using sigma Fx equal to zero, sigma Fy equal to zero, and sigma moment equal to zero. 
Tak ada Rafi. Hello Rafi. Okay sir. So uh, sir, I'd like to ask. Hmm? Uh, what I did was I, uh, I kind of did uh, B B B first and then B H and then B B H sir. Is it okay? Yes, sorry, sir. Do... What 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 did you do for H? I did. Uh, so what I did first was to calculate the beam on B B and then I did B H. B B B D you mean? B, yes. Okay. So I didn't do... by doing so, you find out the B X and B Y. You mean? Yes, sir. Okay, and then, then I you did... can find out as well here, right? AC, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's supposed to be okay. For that case, later, uh, your free body diagram will be like this. There will be uh, BX, uh, BY, and then FAC like that, right? Oh, sorry, it's supposed to be compression. So later is supposed to be compression. F A C like this. And V N N M. Okay. Uh, if you do the calculation correctly, the result is supposed to be the same using this particular free body diagram or this particular free body diagram. But uh, I'm telling you one thing, Rafi. If you do it this way, the possibility of you uh, do an error, uh, create an error when while well, while you finishing the calculation is quite high, Rafi. Okay, because uh, the calculation for this particular internal forces will depend on the calculation of this three, right, Rafi? Okay, sir. Hmm. But if you do the calculation correctly, it's supposed to be okay. Yeah. <coughs> and the next thing that we're supposed to do is to find out for the F, yeah, for the uh, internal force at F there, uh, like it or not, we have to first uh, solve for this uh, FAC, okay? Or if you do, if you want to use the right section, if we do this particular section, we will have a left, left, uh, left cut or the right cut. If we use the right cut, then you have to solve for BXPY. If you use the left cut, we have to solve for FAC, okay? So, uh, like it or not, we have to solve for uh, the, uh, the external force, which is happening at the member DB. So what you're supposed to do is to solve member DB first. This is member DP, for example. We have a 800 LPF. Okay, we have a FAC, and then we have a BY, BX. Okay, sigma moment at B, we can find FAC. Sigma FX equal to zero, we can find BX. Sigma FY equal to zero, we can find BY. Okay. After you solve for uh, this or this one, then you can decide which section that you will want to use. If you decide that you want to use the left section, the left cut, okay, then the one that you need to know beforehand is just FAC. Okay. So our free body diagram later, after we find out FAC there, our free body diagram will become like this. Okay, and here we have the internal shear force V, internal normal force N, and moment. Using sigma FX, sigma FY, and sigma moment, we can find this three. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> Supposed to be okay, right, Rafi? Seems like in this case, you solve for F first before solving for H, right? Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I still have a question, sir. Oh? I'm, I'm still confused on 
uh, choosing the directions after determining the action reaction, sir. Uh, uh, what do you mean by that? So, for example, uh, if I were to slice down at F, uh -huh. uh, then, okay. So for first, if I were to draw the free body diagram, free body diagram for DB, uh -huh. I'd draw the BY upwards and the BX uh, to the right, sir, for example. Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. if I were to calculate the internal forces uh, over at F, uh -huh. so it kind of like zooms out, uh, zooms in, right, sir? Uh -huh. And then should the direction of the uh, reaction forces at B be the same direction as before, or should it be changed, uh, sir? No, uh, it's supposed to be changing. Uh, actually, this one, I make a mistake as well. If Bx is going to the right and By is going up like this, okay, here, if you want to solve for uh, H in the second free body diagram, for your case, is second free body diagram, right? If both uh, positive, right? If both positive, so you have to uh, swap direction. Px is supposed to be going, right? By is supposed to be going down because it's action and reaction. Remember always action and reaction. Okay, Rafi? Yes, sir. Hmm. But remember, if the value is negative, it means that the uh, the direction that you put originally is wrong. So you can swap it directly and then action and, uh, and swap it again for action and reaction. Okay, so for this one, it's better for us to just put the uh, correct direction already. You get it, or not, roughly? Okay, sir, I get it, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> okay, for number three, uh, it's supposed to be okay, right? Now the last one. Uh, is there any still any question about number three? If not, then I will go for number four. For this one, uh, we have to find. Actually, the question is quite the same with this one, with number three, but here uh, the system is slightly different, and we have to find out the internal force at D and E. Okay. Here we have two uh, member. Member BC here for sure is two force member. And member AB is non two force member. The same here before a member DB is non two force member. Member BH is non two force member, but member AC is two force member. Okay. So this one, uh, it's quite uh, simple. Uh, uh, this uh, just now, Darin. Darin, pertanyaannya terkait yang ini apa ya, Darin? Uh, kalau dari aku tuh bingungnya kalau kita motong di titik D, 400 oh. itu bakal kebagi dua apa? Tetap 400 gitu. Hmm, 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 hmm. Nah, Darin, kamu coba baca soal yang dengan baik, Darin. Iya. Yeah. Point D is located just above the 400 Newton force. Artinya apa itu, Gary? Uh, point eh, gaya di, eh, gaya 400 Newton itu ada tepat di titik D. Enggak, enggak. Just above. Ini above itu ke atas. Ini bawah. Oke. Okay. Artinya... Arti di sini itu adalah D itu, sel, uh, D itu sedikit di atas. Posisinya sedikit di atas dari si 400, 400 Newton. Jadi kalau 400 uh, Newton-nya di sini, D itu agak sedikit di atas. gitu. Oke, oke. 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 Jadi kalau misalkan kamu potong di sana, tergantung cutting-nya di mana. Eh, kamu pakai yang cut yang bawah atau yang cut yang atas. Kalau kamu pakai cut yang atas, karena D-nya itu agak sedikit di atas dari gaya 400 Newton, jadi 400 Newton-nya nggak ikut. Kebayang ya? Kebayang. Hmm. Saya ngerti maksud kamu. Kelihatannya maksud kamu itu adalah D-nya pas di atas. Bukan. Ini D-nya itu agak sedikit di atas dari gayanya, posisinya. Jadi kalau misalkan gayanya itu di sini, ya, D-nya sebenarnya agak di atas sedikit. Oke? Oke, oke. 
Hmm. Oh berarti kalau ngambil uang bawah 400 itu termasuk masuk 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 ya masuk dalam kalkulasinya. Kalau ngambil yang cutting yang bawah ya 400 hmm. masuk dalam kalkulasinya. Tetapi kalau kita ngambil cutting yang atas 400nya tidak termasuk. Oke okay. oke okay. itu aja sih. Makasih Pak. Okay, for this particular case, uh, because we have to solve for e here, hey, wait a minute. we have to solve for e here, and we have to solve for t. Okay, I think it is a uh, it is easier for us if we can solve for the external forces first. So what you supposed to do first is to solve for F B C M A X A Y. So This is the free body diagram that you're supposed to solve first. Yeah, we have a y, a x. We have the 400 newton, and then we have a distributed force here. Uh, but the distributed force, uh, I will directly draw just the uh, representation of the concentrated force. R, yeah, R is equal to 200 newton per meter multiplied by two meters because here is two meters the length. So it's supposed to be 400 newton. And then uh, last one we will have a FPC. FPC. Okay, we have three unknowns here. We can solve for AX, AY, and uh, FPC. Using sigma fx, sigma fy, and sigma moment equal to zero. After we solve for those three, okay, we can uh, try to solve for member A B. Uh, then try to do the cut in order to solve for uh, internal force at D and at E like that. Okay, for example, if we want to find out the internal force at D, yeah, then We have to do the cut here, but remember D is located just above the uh, 400 newton force. So if we do the cut here uh, for the free body diagram of the cut, if we use the uh, the bottom cut, okay, if we use the bottom cut, the free body diagram will be like this. Okay, like that. <coughs> and this is our uh, internal force and moment. Okay, we can solve for V and and M using schema fx, schema fy, and schema moment equals zero. Okay, uh, then for E, cut at E, uh, you can use the right cut or you can use the left cut. If it, it will be simpler to use the right cut here. Okay, if we cut here, this is what you will get. So, Okay, FPC, and then distribute force, and then this one is E, uh, counter uh, clockwise, so it's going up, free, normal, moment like this. Okay. As usual, we can uh, solve this by uh, simplifying the distributed force into concentrated force. Okay, and the value of the concentrated force is supposed to be 200 newton, multi newton per meter multiplied by one meter, so it's 200 newton. Okay, it's supposed to be simple enough. Okay, Darren, kalian tanya, dipahami ya, Darren? 
Uh, paham pak. Oh ya pak, kalau misalkan titiknya itu pas di gayanya, itu bakal gimana? Misalkan nggak akan ditanya seperti pas... itu. Nggak akan. Hmm. Okay. Nggak akan ditanya seperti itu. Karena itu jadinya kompleks ya. Hmm. Oke, okay, itu aja sih. Terima hmm. kasih pak. Ya. Karena gini, <tuh> nanti saat uh, saya mengajarkan uh, apa namanya internal force dan juga internal moment diagram. saat ada gaya di situ itu biasanya nanti di internal di apa namanya di internal force diagramnya itu akan ada lompatan di titik tersebut nah lompatan itu kalau pas kita ditanyakan di secara besar gayanya berapa kita nggak tahu karena ada apa sedikit sebelum itu besarnya berapa sedikit sesudah besarnya berapa itu beda jauh kebayang ya dari ini ya kebayang hmm. pak hmm. cep oke okay. Uh, as usual, uh, I think uh, this one is the discussion on the homework. So after this, I will uh, explain to you guys about the internal force and moment uh, diagram. Okay, and I think we will take a five minutes break. So we will start again at eleven o two. Okay. Uh, for the next discussion okay we will take a break for five minutes
Hey, uh, can you guys hear my voice? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I think we will start again. Then. <coughs> uh, oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot one thing. I think it's better to just divide it into two. Stop recording. <coughs> 